Hello everybody, welcome back to Weekly Law Life Wisdom. As so far I've been your host, Sir Yeti, and let's go get into it. The first animal of the week being the moose, also known as the elk in Eurasia. It is a massive member of the deer family that is named in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, the United States, and Canada. Here they inhabit temperate wetlands of both boreal and deciduous forests, where they feed upon primarily forbs, flowers, aquatic plants, and the leaves, needles, fruits, bark, and shoots of trees and woody bushes. Moose themselves are commonly preyed upon by gray wolves, Siberian tigers, orcas, and brown bears, and much more rarely by wolverines, cougars, and Greenland sharks. Standing an average of 4.5 to 7 feet tall at the shoulder and 7 to 10 feet in length, Moose are far and away the largest extant deer species, and male moose are heavier than females, average around 850 to 1550 pounds in weight, compared to females around 450 to 1100 pounds. They can be easily identified by their thick torso, long, thin legs, thick brown fur, noticeable shoulder hump, neck dewlap, and characteristic nasal proboscis. Additionally, male moose have large flatmate antlers spanning 4 to 6 feet in width, and that may or may not be covered in velvet depending on the time of the year. They are a diurnal and typically solitary species, with the strongest bonds between, being between mother and calf. Although they have been known to congregate in small groups, particularly around rich feeding grounds and mineral deposits, and during the breeding season. Running and mating occurs in September and October, during which time males will stake out territory and compete for mates. Female moose have an eight-month gestation period and usually bear one calf or twins if food is plentiful. In May or June, the young will stay with the mother until just before the next young are born, reaching sexual maturity around 16 months of age. Under ideal conditions, the moose may live up to 25 years. Next up is the Chinese fire belly newt, also known as the oriental fire belly newt, the, chi the fire belly newt, or simply the fire newt. It is a species of nocturnal newt in the genus Synops that is, named for, that is native to its namesake, China. In the wild, Chinese fire belly newts are found in low and middle elevations around slow-moving bodies of water such as ponds, rice terraces, still rivers, marshes, and irrigation ditches that have plenty of aquatic vegetation. Here they primarily feed upon earthworms, crustaceans, insects, and other invertebrates. Uh, they are relatively small amphibians, measuring just 2 to 4 inches in length including the smooth rounded tail. The species has incredibly smooth skin which sports asymmetric coloration, being a rich black on the back and a vivid orange or red on lining the underbelly, with these markings also being biofluorescent. Uh, like the other members of its genus, Chinese fire belly newts are mildly poisonous and excrete toxins through their skin, which can cause numbness, dizziness, irritation, and shortness of breath. In spite of its this toxicity, they are incredibly their incredible coloration, docile nature, and easy care make fire belly newts an attractive pet, and they are some of the most common amphibians found in the pet trade. Breeding season lasts from March to September, and after mating, the female lays between two and four eggs at a time on the ventral surface of an aquatic leaf or other water plant. Uh, she may fold this plant with her legs to conceal the eggs. A single female can lay around 100 eggs in one breeding season, and these eggs will typically hatch at some 13 to 24 days after being laid. The metamorphosis of this species occurs quickly, with tadpoles reaching adulthood at just 4 months of age, and under ideal conditions, the Chinese fire belly newt may live upwards of 30 years. Next up is the cougar, also known as the puma, the mountain lion, the catamount, the panther, or the painter, is a large cat in the subfamily Felinae. Uh, Felinae and native to the, is native to the Americas, where it has the, one, the most widespread terrestrial uh, range of any land carnivore in the Western Hemisphere, uh, ranging from the Canadian Yukon to the southern Andes of Argentina and Chile. Across this range, it can be found in a wide variety of habitats, including rocky alpine regions, cloud forests, deserts, tropical and temperate rainforests, swamps, taiga, dry deciduous forests, grasslands, scrubland, wetlands, and even coastal areas. Uh, they primarily prey upon any animal they can reliably catch, including deer, pronghorn, coyote, lizards, insects, rodents, sheep, goats, hogs, armadillos, young crocodilians, Horses, penguins, seals and sea lions, otters, foxes, raccoons, hares, guanacos, vicuña, marsupials, rayas, penguins, wild turkeys, and other birds. 
Mountain lions are themselves preyed upon, albeit rarely, by coyotes, crocodilians, wolves, jaguars, and brown bears. Staying around 24 to 35 inches tall at the shoulders, measuring between 5 and 8 feet in length, and weighing between 65 and 225 pounds, depending on the distinct subspecies, cougars are the fourth largest extant ant species, with males being slightly larger than females. Cougars can be characterized by their round skulls, thick necks, powerful forequarters, long legs, and massive paws, which sport four retractable claws on their hind paws and five on the fore paws. All these adaptations make the cougar adept at climbing and catching prey. While generally loners, cougars will reciprocally share kills and sources of water with one another and seem to organize themselves into small communities defined by the territories of a dominant male. While cougars can mate year-round, females are only reproductively receptive for a period of eight days every three to four weeks. After a pregnancy of 18, 18, 82 to 98 days, I apologize, uh, the females will give birth to one to six cubs, which are fully weaned by 40 days of age. However, they will remain with their mother until they are one or two years old, and cougars reach sexual maturity between two and three years of age, and they live upwards of 20 years. Next up is Armadillidium vulgare St. Lucia, also known as the St. Lucia eye spot or the jelly bean eye spot. They are a subspecies of the medium sized eye spot crustacean found on the island of Santa Lucia, which is located in the windward islands of the Lesser Antilles archipelago in the Caribbean Sea. Here they can be found in nearly all islands, excluding, including here they can be found in nearly all of the island's habitats, including scrubland, dry woodland, and even rainforest. However, they are However, while they are drought tolerant, these ice pods dislike abundant water and high humidity, and therefore avoid the island's wetlands and mangrove swamps. They spend much of their time either in the soil or under the leaf litter along the forest floor, where they primarily feed upon decaying plant material and fecal matter, as well as occasionally grazing upon lichens, algae, fungi, and rotten wood, reaching up to a three and a half, uh, three fourths of an inch. In length, uh, they are the they get their common name of the jelly bean ice pod due to their variety and color variation between individuals, even within the same colony, ranging between white to yellow to orange to black to a dark burgundy. Like other armadillidium ice pods, jelly beans are capable of rolling into a ball when disturbed, and this ability, along with their general appearance, gives them the common name the pill bug, which is not to be confused with the pill millipedes, which are similar in appearance and ecological niche, but are much larger and only distantly related. Because of their unusual yet non-threatening appearance, jelly bean ice pods are often kept as pets, and they make great additions to the cleanup crew of most any terrarium. They have the lowest reproduction rate; they have a slower reproduction rate and life cycle than most other ice pods, with females producing eggs just w once or twice each summer. After mating, several hundred eggs are brooded at a time in the mother's marsupium, which is a pocket on the ventral side of the female pill bug uh, that is kept filled with water until the young are ready to hatch and crawl away on their own. Under ideal conditions, the jelly bean ice pod may live upwards of three years. Next up is the bald eagle, which is a large bird of prey that can be found throughout Canada, the United States, northern Mexico, and very rarely in Greenland and eastern Russia. Uh, they prefer to dwell near large bodies of open water with an abundant food supply and old growth trees in which they can nest such as along sea coasts, rivers, and large lakes, as well as mangrove swamps and freshwater marshes. They are opportunistic carnivores, which primarily feed upon fish, shellfish, and carrion, but have been known to occasionally prey upon reptiles, amphibians, small mammals, and even other birds, in particular grebs, ducks, and gulls. These eagles typically measure between 28 and 40 inches in body length and sport an 6 to 8 foot wingspan. Females are about 25% larger than males on average. Uh, averaging around 12 pounds in weight versus 9 pounds in weight for males. The plumage of the adult bald eagle is an evenly dark brown with the white head on, on the head and tail. The tail itself is moderately long and slightly wedge-shaped, and the hooked beak, large feet, and piercing irises are bright yellow in coloration. Immature bald eagles are almost indistinguishable from golden eagles, possessing dark brown plumage overlay with messy white streaking until they reach sexual maturity around 3 to 5 years of age, at which point their plumage changes coloration. Uh, when they are old enough to breed, they often return to the area in which they were born, and it is often thought that bald eagles mate for life. However, if one member of a pair dies or disappears, the survival will often choose a new mate. 
Bald eagle courtship famously involves elaborate, spectacular calls and flight displays, including swoops, chases, and cartwheels, in which they fly high, lock talons, and then free fall, separating just before hitting the ground. Breeding occurs from February to May, with females laying about one to three eggs inside the largest nest of any North American bird, which is up to eight feet wide and one ton in weight. Both partners take turns incubating the eggs for a period of 34 to 36 days until hatching, with the young being fully fledged at eight to 14 weeks of age. Bald eagles are also known to occasionally adopt and raise other hatchling raptors, in particular red-tailed hawks. Under ideal conditions, a bald eagle may live up to 50 years. Next up is the three-spot gourami, also known as the opaline gourami, blue gourami, and the gold gourami. It is a species of fish in the genus Trinopotus, and they are native to the ponds, marshes, swamps, wetlands, slow-moving rivers throughout China, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Java, Borneo, and Sumatra. And they have been widely introduced outside of their native range in places such as the Philippines, India, Sulawesi, and Trinidad. Here they are a seasonally migratory species that feeds primarily upon zooplankton, crustaceans, and insects. They spend the dry season in permanent bodies of water, migrating into flooded forests, seasonal ponds, and wet grasslands during the rainy seasons. This 5-inch long species has a long, flattened body with large, rounded fins, as well as a labyrinth organ that allows them to breathe air directly. They get their common name from their two spots along each side of the body in line with the eye, considering which is considered the third spot. The specific variety names include opal or opaline garama for varieties with a marble pattern, blue garama for the blue morph, gold or gold garama for the yellow morph, platinum garama for the white morph, and lavender or amethyst garama, uh, as, which is a result of a cross between a blue and a gold resulting in a lavender shade. When ready to breed, males build a bubble nest along the surface of the water, typically around some leaves or aquatic vegetation and then begins to entice the female by swimming back and forth, flaring his fins and raising his tail. If successful, and after mating, the female will deposit uh, up to 800 eggs inside the bubble nest, which, once spawning is completed, the female's involvement is over, and the male will chase her off to prevent her from eating the eggs. The male will proceed to care for the eggs until they hatch after a period of 30 days. Under ideal conditions, a three-spot in the ground may live upwards of five years. Next up is our extinct animal leaf, being Attenborosaurus, which is an extinct species of Pliosaurus from the early Jurassic of Dorset, England. The discovery of Attenborosaurus was unorthodox, to say the least, with the uh, first uncovered remain. When first uncovered, the remains were referred to the Plesiosaurus genus as a new species, P. Coneyberry, named after William Coneybear, who was one of the first two people who named the Plesiosaurus genus back in 1821. Unfortunately, these remains were destroyed during a bombing raid in World War II, but a plastered cast of them was made before this happened, which has meant that all but the original skin impressions can still be studied. In 1993, upon further detailed examination, Dr. Robert T. Baker came to the realization that while similar to Plesiosaurus, the remains were different enough to warrant the creation of its own genus, Attenboroughsaurus, which was named after Sir David Attenborough, who is perhaps the most well-known nature documentary narrator of the last century. Measuring some 16 feet in length, Attenboroughsaurus has a small head, long neck, and round body with four flippers, like many plesiosaurs. The skin impressions of the original fossils are known to being having a smooth membrane that was devoid of any noticeable large scales. The smooth skin probably helped the stream on Attenboroughsaurus as it swam through the water by reducing drag from water resistance. In life, Attenboroughsaurus would have fed by approaching shoals of fish or cephalopods and using its long neck to reach in and snap up prey. And then with its sharp teeth and trap-like mouth, it would ensure that a secure, secure grip was held and there was little or no chance of the prey escaping. As always, take care to my guys, gals, non-binary pals. Have a wonderful day.